All right, if anybody's in here already, just hang tight one sec. I got one more thing I need to try to work out. All right, so today, uh, wait, what am I doing? I forgot I was on camera. <laughs> um, oh, all right, so uh, welcome to uh, Dreadnought Woodshop uh, Live. Um, this week, we're gonna be making a candle holder. So we're gonna be making um, a little decorative piece to hold a little tea light candle, right? So um, I'm gonna be, It's I don't have an example, but I do have one that's kind of in process, and it's kind of what we're going for, a little kind of pebble-looking thing. Truthfully, I probably should have made the blanks a little bigger for the design I want, but basically that's how they'll go. Um, and there's a couple of different ways uh, to go about doing it. Um, so you can go, let's see. I've elected to go with um, making it out of four-quarter stock or three-quarter inch material um, which makes it easier to come up with uh, with the material you could also even use um, welcome Harold welcome Lawrence um, we you can use if you use these uh, you know this is from a three quarter uh, four quarter board I'm not really sure what kind of wood it is it does have nice grain to it um, you know and we're gonna use that so this is the most economical way to do it because we all have little scraps in our shop. Like I make, I do other things besides turning. So, you know, making furniture or boxes or whatever. Um, I have a lot of these uh, four quarter um, cutoffs. And this is about two and a quarter inches uh, square. So, and if you're not familiar with the terminology, four quarter just means approximately an inch, but more likely uh, three quarters of an inch. And that's really all you need. Because this piece right here is about a half an inch, um, it's about a half inch thick, so you'll have like a quarter inch left for your bottom or whatever like that. So uh, three quarter inch material will work out uh, just fine. Now it is a little easier um, to use something like this, like a spindle blank, all right? Um, and the reason why that would be easier is if you're going to make a lot of them, uh, you could drill the hole out, you know, get your hole, get the hole right for the candle, right? And then you turn the sides and then you part this one off and then you can move on to the next one and you just continue to move through the blank like that but for some of us it's harder to come up with material you know that big you know this is um i don't know two let's see it's about two a little less it's about two and three eighths square uh piece of cherry now i get i got this particular blank from um a cherry tree that i processed i found it on the curb and I processed it myself, which is why, you know, I'm fortunate enough to have these things. But these can be uh, rather expensive to purchase. So, like I said, you can use um, you can use four quarter stock. So that's what we're gonna do uh, for the demo. Um, you know, and it's also nice to be able to make things that you, out of scraps that you can uh, that are marketable. And these are very marketable. People like candles. Uh, Lawrence, if you have uh, Instagram or anything like that, um, I'd love to see a picture of your of the uh, pin that you turn. That would be awesome. Um, you could send it over, and I'd love to see that if you if you can. Um, let's see. Welcome, Spindles uh, Spindles Workshop. I'm trying. You know, I'm always trying some new setup with the cameras. Like today, I couldn't remember a password, so that's why I was late getting started. I had to go dig up this ancient phone and uh hopefully and, you know fortunately it did work but anyway so i'm looking around this thing trying to read the comments so bear with me but uh we're gonna i'm gonna eventually work all the kinks out anyway so i'm sure you guys have heard me ramble on long enough so we're gonna get uh right to this project so i'm gonna switch 
uh, camera views, and uh, we're going to get started. So I'm going to start with an overhead view. Um, so basically I have both sides, let's see, get that out of here. I have the centers marked on both sides. And basically, um, if you're not familiar with that, um, you would go from corner to corner with a ruler or similar straight edge and then mark your mark a line and you do that on both sides from you do that from this corner to that corner and that corner to that corner and it arrives at approximate center um, this isn't like a high precision project so you know it's not that important um, but you want to be as close to center as possible uh, to get the best use out of your material so I've already made a few of these I've been working on a few of these you can see I got shavings everywhere on the lathe bed um, so I have this all set up for where I want to be now I'm using half inch uh, step centers just to keep them just because you know they're small and keep them out of the way um, I won't be turning down that far but uh, it is nice to have that extra room to be able to move around now you could do this um, I find the best way to do this is with a bowl gouge all right if you're gonna do um, if you're gonna be turning this project out of uh, four quarter stock like I am then this is basically like bowl turning right um, let's see uh, Larry when you post that tag me on uh, Instagram so I can see it or you could send it to me in a message either one so anyway like I was saying I'm gonna use a bowl gouge to, tur to uh, turn this down so it's really important to note that uh, because of the the grain orientation this is basically like turning a bowl so you don't want to use a roughing gouge for this all right because you're gonna have in grain coming around and it can uh, catch in there and uh, it can lead to really bad things so don't do that now if you were gonna turn it using spindle stock like this so it would be mounted this way and the in grain would be on the ends it would be perfectly fine to do that all right so anyway let's get this cracking um, I got the speed up pretty high I'm running around 2000 rpm and like I said I'm gonna use my bowl gouge here and basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in from the outside just to establish a shoulder. Okay. So I want to just get down to, get down past the, uh, let's see. See, I can kind of show it. I don't know. This is the, the, uh, the old phone uh, that I had as a pinch hitter to like save me because I couldn't remember the password for the better phone. But you can see right here that now I've cut basically down to where it's round. So I know that that's where I have to go. Plus, cutting this like this, it keeps the fibers from blowing out as I'm removing these corners and cutting across. That's going to keep it from uh, getting all uh, boogered up, for lack of a better, more technical term. All right. Putting my face shield on because these splinters are serious. All right, so let's go back to the other view. All right, so now that I have this shoulder set up, now I can go ahead and remove the rest of the material. Um, so I have that shoulder taken care of. So now what I'm going to do is remove the rest of it in kind of a scooping motion. So I'm going to cut like that. And it's a little less, um, it'll beat you up a little less than trying to come across and cut that corner off. So... Okay, and that happens pretty quickly. All right, and really, what I want to do is just make it round. I don't want to take away too much material because um, I didn't leave a lot of extra. I didn't leave a lot of extra material uh, here, so I don't want to take off a whole lot. I could have made the blank a little bit bigger. Um, in hindsight, I probably should have for the design I was looking for, but I already cut a bunch of these squares, so. I'm married to it now so we just need to put since this is pretty much if you look at this versus the size of the jaws it's pretty much the same size so what we want to do is just take off just put a little tenon on here we're not going to be you know doing anything super crazy aggressive so you don't need a huge tenon um, you just need one you just need a tenon that's sufficient uh, to hold it in the chuck 
to hollow out the other side. Like I said, it's not going to be very deep, all right? And the reason why I need, the reason why I'm leaving this shoulder right here is because that shoulder is super important uh, for the holding, to, you know, when you, uh, for the hold on your chuck because you want to make sure that you have a face that registers off the top face of these jaws, okay? So that shoulder is going to do that. And when I cut the dovetail, that's going to widen that out just a little bit. But this just goes to show just how small, um, just how small of a, of a shoulder you really need to work with and a tenon. Because you'll you're going to see throughout the process that this is uh, more than sufficient for what we need to do. Even though it looks like there's really there's barely a tenon at all there. Okay, and I know it's hard to see that dovetail, but there is a dovetail there. Okay, so that's most that's all the prep work we need to do from this side. So I'm going to move a few things because I got a whole bunch of crap on the on the bedways right now. So I have a whole bunch of these. Uh, blanks that I've, you know, my uh, my wife's buddies. <laughs> um, my wife, uh, her buddies at school. She's a school teacher, and uh, every year they come by uh, to buy gifts, uh, handmade gifts, and so we're. She calls it an open house. She has like hot chocolate and stuff, and uh, that's going to be this Saturday. So I got to make a bunch of these. Uh, for that event so anyway all right so we're going to take the live center we're going to take the live center out because I all if I leave it in there I always end up rubbing my elbow on it and it's not particularly soft so I think we may have enough time to do a couple of these um, which would be really good um, and then I can do some other thing. I can try a couple other things like maybe some texturing or something like that. Um, but we'll see how it goes. So now what I want to do is mount this back in the in the chuck, right? And that's plenty good hold. And these jaws are pretty much closed, so that's giving me uh, the best possible hold I can get. Okay. Take just a second look and see if we got any questions going on over here. Alright, looks good. So now what we're going to do, and I have a uh, Jacob's chuck with a drill bit in it. So I don't have the right size um, for this, for the candle. This is the closest I have, which is a 1 and 5 eighths, which is fine. Because what we'll do is we'll just uh, adjust the hole using the tools. Okay. So we're going to put that um, Jacob's chuck in. Alright. And I figured out that for this particular bit um, right up here to the top uh, this tops top of the silver section because it's got a little bevel and there's a little dark paint on it but right to the top of that for this particular uh, bit is the perfect depth for what I'm trying to do so I'm gonna lower the speed down to about I don't know um, 900 or so and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna drill this out This blank is definitely smaller than I would have liked. Let's see. Yeah, it's definitely smaller than what I would have liked, but that's okay. We'll work with it. All right, so we'll take that out. Same thing. Don't want to leave this in the um, in your tailstock because if you bump into it, it will not tickle. All right. So now we get to. We're gonna go ahead and try to get this get our candle to fit in there first I gotta find it so these are just inexpensive candles that I picked up I think at Walmart so you can see that it doesn't really fit right now okay just barely doesn't fit so I'm gonna take a parting tool and I'm going to uh, clean up that so I'm gonna clean up that shoulder and widen this out just a little bit now uh, resist the urge to make this thing fit super tight um, because you don't need that right and then it makes it hard to get the candle out um, you don't want to have to you know you don't want to have to make the recipient of this item whether it's a gift or you sell it or whatever 
you don't want people to have to fight with this thing to get the candle out if they want to change it out so you know this isn't one of those things where you need like a a fit that displaces air you really don't want that so you really just we just want to open this up enough so that we can um so that we can get our candle in there all right and again we're not looking for a super tight fit we're just looking to be able to get it in and out of there with relative ease okay so let's check it see that's a little that would fit but i'd have to force it in there and then it'd be really hard to get it out so i'm going to open that up just a little bit more see if we can get you a better view there all right so i'm just going to take i'm just using the side of the tool just using the side of the parting tool right and i'm going to come in just r like come right in on the edge right there and then i'm actually going to roll it just a little bit so kind of like I'm exaggerating the motion now, but I'm rolling it a little bit to try to engage that cutting edge because as this widens out, it pushes it further away from the wall. So if you angle it just a little bit, you can cut, get it to cut all the way down to the bottom. Okay. Blow that out and let's try it again. So this is closer. So the fit at the top is good. I just need to take a little bit more material out of the bottom and we'll be good to go. Okay. Don't worry too much about uh, the finish and stuff inside the bottom of this thing because I mean, nobody's gonna see that. I mean. Unless they're changing out a candle. So first time it's taking me this many attempts to do it. Okay. Alright, let's see. That's a little tight, but I think I'll go with it. Nah. See? That's the kind of problem you have when you make it fit too tight. Because my candle came right out of the little sleeve. And now, I'm having difficulties getting the thing out. There we go. Okay. So that is why we don't want to make this fit too tightly. Let me try a smaller parting tool okay. I think that right there ought to do it okay perfect that's what we want right there and this way you know if these things are pretty inexpensive so I'm sure quality control isn't the best in the places where they make these things so making it just a making it a loose fit uh, will make sure that the you know your customer or the recipient of your gift can get their candles in and out of there without with relative ease. What's up, Chili Man? How's it going? What's up, Jamie? Nice that you can join us from over the pond. Let's see here. All right, so we got. So we got our hole in there. So now it's really just turning it to whatever kind of shape you want. Um, I like to make them look like little pebbles, but this blank is too small for that. So um, I'm just going to kind of do it, kind of make do with it. That's not to say that this blank would be too small for everybody. It just kind of depends on what you want this to look like. And who knows, I might end up loving it, because that does happen. So I'm going to do just a little bit of shaping from this side to kind of get it in the right direction. Um, once we have, you know, once we've gotten to this point, you know, there's not a whole lot more, a whole lot of additional turning to go. 
Now, here's something that I always do. Not that I'm recommending it for any, for particularly for anybody else, but I like to have a small tape around the rim of any bowl. Um, and this is basically like a really small bowl. So I'm going to put just a little, just a slight taper right here. And that's just because, you know, I like to do that. All right. So let's take a look at this. All right. Pretty happy with that. So um, I was kind of thinking about putting a little texture on it, but I think I'm going to let this one roll because the, the grain's really nice. So I'm going to go to, I've taken my time and, you know, um, cut this carefully. So I have a pretty good surface already. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, start with 220 grit sandpaper and get the speed down. Can you guys hear me okay? Because I do have this fan that I could turn off. Let's see, it's just a little warm in here for some reason. Alright, so I'm just going to use a little bit of 220, kind of get the surface where I want it. Okay. And then I will sand the inside just a little bit. Um, again, you know, don't go crazy here. In use, nobody's going to see the inside of this thing. Just sand it just a little bit. Soften up that uh, the top of that bevel. And then go ahead and work out uh, any kind of inconsistency. So, like, if you, you know, if... Uh, when you're just getting started, you know, you end up with a lot of, you can end up with a lot of ridges uh, in the surface. And this is a good time uh, to take care of those with uh, sandpaper. If you can't do it with a, if you can't do it by cutting, then you can use the sandpaper to kind of fare that surface and get it where you want it. That's not to say that I don't have to use sandpaper to save me from time to time, because I do. <laughs> you know, don't let anybody tell you that because you had to sand it that it's any less good. As long as your final result is what you're looking for, that's what you're looking for. Uh, and make sure you're having fun doing it. That's the most important thing. All right, so I sanded the outside. Pretty happy with that surface. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna break out my custom wax, or custom grit. Um, And my man Scott from uh, Custom Creations over in Australia makes these um, in small batches. Small business. You definitely want to support them. But this is going to really make this thing look awesome here in just a couple of just a couple of, of minutes and be able to um, have this thing finished. Well, the project won't be finished because we got to turn it around and do the back, but this side will be done. So I'm gonna start with uh, I'm gonna start with step one, which is kind of a coarse. It's a coarser uh, abrasive paste, and I like to put it on while the lathe is off, and then I'll turn it on and and uh, work it into the surface. And really, at this point, I'm just worried about working on this outside bit. Because when I turn it around, um, when I turn it around and remount it on the chuck, I'm going to be cutting the back. So if I were to finish the bottom right now, it wouldn't make any difference. Because I basically cut that finish off anyway. So once you have it applied, then you just go in there and work it into the surface and give that grit a little bit of, give that grit some time to uh, finish your sanding job. So basically this is like sanding with a really uh, fine abrasive. So I do that. I go ahead and apply it and work it into the surface and turn it over to a clean side and then take out the excess, whatever's on the surface. You can already see that we're starting to get a pretty nice um, surface there. They're just that quick in a couple of minutes. I'm going to turn the towel around. And I'm going to use step two. Okay, step two. Same deal, except I'm not going to turn it off first. I'm just going to go ahead and apply it while it's spinning. All right, a little bit goes a long way, guys. All right. So, got that on. 
I find that I don't have to spend as much time with step two because step one's done most of the heavy lifting. All right, you can see it's got a very nice shine on it. Then I'm gonna take this. I don't know why, quite why. I don't know exactly why I'm so precious with paper towels, but you know, I don't believe in waste. So I'm gonna go ahead and use a clean side, and I'm gonna get to pick up some of this wax, the custom wax, and that's gonna be um, that's gonna be the final coat of finish for this. All right. Now with the wax, I typically don't buff it off. I just put it on, right, and then I let it dry for a while, and I'll buff it later off the lathe. But there we go. We got a nice finish on that. All right. So now I'm going to take this off and then turn it around and remount it so that I can work on the back. Okay. So this is where we are so far. Make sure, looking over here at the camera, make sure I got it in frame. All right. So this is where we are so far. I really don't know what kind of wood that is. If you guys know, uh, feel free to um, to pipe, chime in and and uh, let us know what it is but it is very nice so now I'm gonna turn this around and remount it in the chuck I'm gonna go to a different chuck with smaller jaws now the thing is if you don't have two chucks and I realize not everybody has the luxury of multiple chucks you could just as well do this with a jam chuck and I've done that I've used jam chucks on this channel a lot um, and that would actually be um, a s an excellent choice to do this because the nice thing about the jam chucks is that a wood on wood joint is going to hold very well through friction um, without damaging um, without damaging the surface because the dovetail jaws in the in the chuck the dovetail profile in the chuck has a tendency to kind of bite into the sides because this is a candle holder that doesn't really bother me, right? Because the majority of the time in use, it's gonna be looking a lot like this, right? So it doesn't really matter to me what that, um, what that inside surface looks like, so. And you might say that maybe I'm not, you know, uh, putting, taking enough care and putting enough pride in a thing, but at the end of the day, you gotta look at it like this, right? So if you were preparing for a show or whatever you know think about how much you're gonna make how much you're potentially gonna make off of this thing and then you really got to think about uh, how much labor you put into making it right so that's a thing that most likely you're the only person that's gonna notice um, those little marks inside um, so I wouldn't sweat it too much also wouldn't go crazy trying to sand it to within you know sand it to some glass smooth surface in there because again nobody's gonna see it but you okay well not in use anyway okay so we got it all mounted up and we're gonna work on the bottom <laughs> see Let's see, I gotta put my glasses back on here. Disabled Park Hopper. Uh, yeah, I do have socials. You can find me at Dreadnought Woodshop on pretty much all social media platforms. I think on TikTok or Twitter, my handle is not Dread because Dreadnought Woodshop was already taken. Um, but everywhere else you can find me at Dreadnought Woodshop. And if you're gonna send me a message, Instagram is probably the best place. Okay, so now I know that I have plenty of material down here at the bottom because this, um, the hole I drilled was only half an inch and this piece is three quarters. So I can pretty much do whatever I want with this bottom area. Now the thing is, uh, I don't really have this tightened up super tight because uh, I don't want to crack it. So I don't want to get too aggressive with the cuts. Okay. I just want to have a simple shape uh, on the bottom. Let's 
So I'm just going to come in here, start cutting away some of this material and continue in that curve. If you take your time cutting this, then you'll spend a lot less time sanding it. Um, all right, I think I can, I think I can live with that. So then I'm gonna take off a little bit of this material on the bottom because I think it's just a tad tall, and then uh, we'll get around to sanding it and finishing it, and then that'll be the end of this one. Now when you're working on the bottom, the one thing you want to do, like any other time you're turning, is you want to make sure that you don't make the, make the inside bigger than the outside. While there's a good amount of space, there's not an infinite amount of space, so you want to keep that in mind. So we got our bottom done now, so I'm going to go back and I'm going to hit it with just a little bit of a... Uh, 220 grit just like I did on the top and then follow it with some 320 and then we'll use the custom custom grit custom wax on it for a finish and then this one's done I did forget to mention one thing um, when you're doing the bottom right I always like to put a concave I like to put a concave in the bottom of my pieces so that it sits on this outer ring. So if for chance that this wasn't dry or it wasn't 100% dry when I made it and it warps and it goes out around, it'll sit on this rim versus sitting on the middle, which means it's less likely to rock. And the way I check and make sure that my uh, concave area is lower than the rim is I just take a straight edge like a ruler or something like that and just run it across the bottom and make sure that there's light all the way between there's light in between the bottom of the piece and those two the high spots on the rim on the on the uh, the rim of the foot there so all right so let's take a look at this see how we're doing and eh, I need to cut that just a little more um, because when you mount these whenever you mount your stuff in the uh, you mount wood in the chuck there's it crushes the fire the metal jaws crush the fibers a little bit uh, this is where a jam chuck is superior because you'll get a more um, you'll get when you remount it on the on your jam chuck it's usually runs a little tr it runs much truer because it doesn't crush those fibers so now what I'm gonna do is just go come in here and try to blend those two surfaces together okay see if I can get rid of that get rid of that ridge there yep did it okay so now I'll go ahead and sand it a little bit and we'll get on with the uh, finish crank the speed down okay there we go I know this is a pretty simple project um, and uh, you know these are great projects for a lot of different reasons um, there was a time a couple years ago um, that I wanted to learn how to make Christmas ornaments, right? If you, um, I have a video on YouTube of me making that Christmas ornament, one of them, and I talked about how uh, making that ornament really helped me because I really wanted to learn how to make finials. And I made a whole bunch of these ornaments and they all had finials and that gave me the perfect opportunity to uh, practice making finials and through that process of repetition um, on a small scale I could uh, get a lot of practice in on doing on doing just that making the finials so as a result I ended up getting to a point where I was very comfortable um, turning finials so this project right here would be really good 
um, if you're trying to uh, get better at um, maintaining certain shapes and forms and uh, being able to establish curves in your work because it, although it's a small curve it's still you're still uh, doing the same thing as if you're working on a big piece and you can develop this out because it's a small piece you can finish them you you know you're more likely to be able to finish it so anyway hopefully that was helpful to somebody <laughs> all right so we're going to go ahead and put this uh, step one on okay all right crank the speed up pretty good work it in basically the custom grit is finishing the sanding job for you because I stop at 320 and then the custom grit takes it up uh, significantly higher than that gives me a nice finish okay go ahead and do step two And you, this product, you can definitely use it on uh, food safe surfaces. Um, it's definitely food safe. In fact, I believe Scott, the creator, actually has a video online of him eating it on pizza. <laughs> Same. Okay. And buff that off. Buff off the excess. Then we go to wax. And then we'll be done with it. Okay, so here's our finished product here. All right, there's our finished product. Nice, simple, uh, make a couple of these and put them together as a set. And it goes together pretty quickly. I mean, you know, I'm doing it on a live um, and it probably took me 30 minutes or so to do this. So, um, you know, if you weren't talking and trying to do a YouTube live, you could probably do it. You could probably do it a lot faster than that. <laughs> um, and it would make for a good pro great project to sell, um, you know, at a craft show or, you know, people coming by your house for an open house or something like that. Um, it makes a good product for that. So, and, you know, I know my wife loves little candle things, you know, you can put but you know you have a couple of these maybe even put make them in different uh, different types of materials and set those out around the bath for you know relaxing soak after a long day or whatever so anyway um, well eh, we got about 10 minutes left um, uh, I probably I'm not gonna start another one because I know that I won't get it done in time <laughs> um, but um, yeah, so anyway, lots of possibilities here. You can do lots of different things with it. So I'm going to scroll through and see if I missed anything in the in the comments here. Let's take a look. Uh, let's see. 